Hello and welcome to Let's Play Rugrats Royal Ransom. Today is episode one and we will be playing River Fun Run right here. However, I'm going to be switching out babies because I don't want to lose Lil. So I'm switching over to our racing expert, Philip, who will instead lead us. And so now, let's watch this cutscene as soon as it loads. It'll sort of fill you in on the story. The deep gripping story. The good news is, you've got your own boat. The bad news is, you're in a boat race against the family of crocodiles. You have to beat Junior first, then Mama, then finally Big Daddy. Your boat is pretty tough. As long as you don't let it play with rocks and trees. Good luck, Captain! Race one. Ready? Set? Go! Look, you know what a crocodile's favorite food is? So Why, yes. Hello, everyone. This is actually my second attempt at doing this, because first time around I had some, let's just say some issues with this level. Mostly with my boat just glitching, which is a pretty common thing. I'm gonna put a little clip of it glitching out and doing some really weird stuff at the end. Just stick around. Yeah, see like that. How on earth do they explain that? They don't, that's how. And then there's just stuff like that where you can get stuck for an indefinite amount of time. It's like midair and it's like really annoying. As you can see, it's very, very, very easy to get stuck on things. And the fact that the stage layout is so curvy and small doesn't exactly help much. So next up, we're going backwards up this river. If you can't tell, I'm just working on actually finding it this time around. I lost two babies, and I gave up. I was all like, you know what? Two babies is a whole lot of babies to lose on a single failed attempt. It's gonna come back in stronger later on. And so that's what I did. It's ultimately fine because, you know, I can always come back in later on. So this game deals with rubber banding in a very interesting way. If you don't know, rubber banding is a mechanic in video games so that no player either thinks the race is too hard or too easy. It's employed rather heavily and in very iconic ways in the game. Banjo-Kazooie, or namely Banjo-Tooie. There's actually a super famous example of it being sort of weird in that game. Okay, so, so I can just run to the end. You're the best around! Yeah! Way to play. Set. And now Go! <laughs> Yeah! Ready? You have no idea just how Set. hard it is to get it to actually Go. function and to see it functioning. It's actually pretty incredible. And see, the, those shortcuts and things like that don't usually... The thing is, these shortcuts are so... Well... Weird, because they should be fast. They're actually, a lot of times, the reason why I end up going slower. And it's like, I don't... But at the same time, I know if I don't use them, I'll probably lose against this guy, because he's actually really fast. Plus also, if I don't use them, I won't be able to... Oh. Yes! I win! Fatality. <laughs> oh man, that, you have no idea how happy I am to see that. 
So what's going on here, guys, is I unlocked the big battery because I won. Now I can Good for you. More big go and switch off to Lil and actually start doing stuff. You Next up is... Don't worry about the other stuff I left in here. My that 160 dollars and that other battery. I'll get it in a bit, don't worry. I want to have at least an extra you life or two set up game, before I go in there. AKA, at least 200. Just so that I have that safety net. Monkey business. You've got to catch the monkeys that stole all the bananas. Finding them is easy. Just follow the magic helper ball through the jungle. Along the way, you can collect bananas that the monkeys have dropped. When you find a monkey, use the action button to toss bananas at them to slow them down. Then, run up and grab them. Finally, carry the monkey to one of these crates where they'll be nice and safe. Alrighty then. So... This is a fabled, well, platforming level. This game is actually pretty fun. And these platforming levels are what make it fun. I know that was a pretty bad starting level, but it didn't have to be. It just so happened that I'm absolutely garbage at this game, other. Unlike its actual level, so... Or, well, rather, on those racing levels, and I like to get that out of the way as soon as I can, because otherwise I will be stuck here for the rest of my life. Just hoping and praying to... Well... Praying to Harambe by name. So instead of dropping him off in the one that is on this island, instead I'm going across to drop him off at this small island just because it is more out of the way of a crate. And it's easier to go back to the last island than it is to go back, say, six islands in order to get to it. There we go. Yeah, the best part about playing on Reptar Tough is that you really do get so many extra lives. But not because of why you're thinking, probably. The reason why is just because there's more to each objective. You have to play for a lot longer on every single level on Reptar Tough. You know how you have to collect 8 monkeys here? You have to collect 12 monkeys on Reptar Tough. I think it was 4 on Baby Easy. So that shows you the difference between the three main difficulties. Then I think the only way to get him back is... To... I forget. Oh, duh, the head. It's sort of obvious I haven't played this stage in... A while. I mean, I don't make it a point to go back this far in the game whenever I play, usually. I do have it for PS2, and I do have a completed save file on that. When I play the PS2 version, though, I actually play, well, probably my favorite stage in the game, Meanie Genie, on Baby Easy, because... Hey, that's just what difficulty I beat the game on back as a kid. There's no shame in, well, having been a child at one point who could only finish games on easy difficulty. That's why they're there.
See what I mean though when I say that this is much easier than the racing stages? The platforming you can definitely tell is their strong suit. They really only threw in the racing stages as sort of gifts to the players. And for that I enjoyed it. Of course this game's racing stages aren't particularly good. If you've ever played the game, the Spongebob movie Squarepants video game, then you'll have experience with a far better racing game that came out of a platformer. It's just a more entertaining experience overall. And also, for some reason, this game's double jump mechanics only work when it feels like working. So you'll oftentimes see me fall just due to faulty jump mechanics, which is a real shame. But I guess you can't really blame THQ for it. They license the games, not... You know, they weren't really responsible for much else in terms of the games they sell. They oftentimes would hire in studios to make them that were, you know, actual game development studios. Like Avalanche or Blue Sky or Heavy Iron, which... By the way, if you've ever played any of the Spongebob games, you'll know the name Heavy Iron pretty well. Less familiar is Blue Sky Interactive, the people who made Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. And while Heavy Iron's game is a better game, I mean, nothing wrong with the product they gave us with Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. In fact, I still prefer it over their f over Heavy Iron's first attempt, Battle for Bikini Bottom. I cannot deny, as well though, that movie game is a superior product, but Revenge of the Flying Dutchman is a close second to Spongebob-related games. After that, it's pretty, well, odd, to say the least, as to which games go in the list at all, because there's so many Spongebob games that don't even deserve to make it on the list of good games. I don't know why, but it seems to be a big issue for a lot of people whenever they try to make a Spongebob game of messing it up quite badly. Please don't tell me that I'm actually gonna die just trying to collect money. I mean, I guess that is accurate to real life, and I could say that this game is secretly a simulation or something. Hey, that might actually be a good idea if I wanted to get subscribers, too. Say Rugrats Simulation Game. Rugrats Life Simulators. That actually sounds pretty awesome of a type of game. Now I have to go back here, use this stupid... <sighs> Man, what I do for video games, am I right? But, no joke, though. Game devs are great sometimes. Sometimes they're actual... Just... Biggest. I mean, the biggest jerks, I mean... Seriously. If I tried to get away with putting this kind of stuff in my... Seriously, if I tried to get away with putting this kind of... Slightly sloppy controls into a game...
Even if it was an April Fool's joke, people would be mad. And people are actually paying real-life money for these semi-broken games. I want to find out exactly how I can apply to be a game developer. Only have to do half the work and get paid the full price of my service. It's a great deal if you think about it. Also, for some reason, this stage gives out, like, almost nothing when it comes down to coins. Which is strange, considering the fact that other stages of this game are just coin havens. But, I don't know. Once again, a lot of the issues that I have with this game, I do oftentimes just chalk up to the fact that, well, it's this studio, and, well, it's probably something that was never a very high priority a game. I'm sure that there was a small amount of people in the dev studio at the time that did care a lot about it, but realistically speaking, there wasn't too many people involved with making it who were, well, that. Either skilled with game making, or, well, you know, as dedicated as they probably should have been. After all, developing a game is a big commitment, and to be honest, a lot of game developers oftentimes aren't as dedicated as they should be. However, one thing that you can definitely be sure of is these game developers sure did put in a lot of time. Also, this game has a surprisingly small amount of cut content. Usually these licensed games like this have a lot of content that was cut for various reasons. But as far as this one is concerned, it seemed to have stayed pretty pure from idea to actualization, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It's not every day that you see a game developer that was given the time given the support from their parent company and actually were able to make a game that was satisfying to fans, the studio, and also themselves. Usually one of the three complain about a product and that's the end of that glorious idea. But in terms of Ro Roller Anthem, it seemed to have gone pretty smooth for all parties. I mean, the public, while it wasn't a super popular game, it was still a game based around a fairly popular franchise as well. I have to admit, one of the biggest problems with this game is curves. If there's any kind of a sloped surface in this game, a lot of things just don't function properly. That includes a lot of pretty important things as well, like mechanics. Like picking up the monkeys, for instance, is definitely neutered when you have to carry around a monkey. It's a bit of a shame, considering the fact that that's something you do a lot. And not just carrying around look, but like, you know, picking up anything in this game is... an unending stream of issues when it wants to be, of course. When it chooses to be nice. This game is actually incredibly fun, and 
even a little bit addicting at times. But when it chooses to not be nice, and also see, this is the problem too. Jumping can be such a weird mess. That's me just frantically attempting to jump, by the way. Yes, I hate how those things still blow up and can hurt you even if you hit them with the banana. It's just one of those mechanics, that's it. I'll be realistic and sort of cool if they attempted it, but at the same time, it's just annoying that they implemented it because I don't think anybody particularly wanted to have that kind of an issue when they made are playing a Rugrats based video game. I mean, it's not something that I personally think of when I think of Rugrats. Difficult to be with staying alive due to awkward controls is not necessarily something I think of when I think of Rugrats. I usually think of that when I think of Sonic. No, a little bit of a, a little bit of a side jab to tell you a sense. I mean, listen, Sega is great, and if I hear me, but he says, oh no, Sega is bad. I will be perfectly willing to lose them as a subscriber if they do say Sega's bad. Oof. That could have been potentially bad. But yeah. They just have way too many ideas and not enough ability to do it. Sega's like... Especially older Sega is like a dreamer who thinks up really cool stuff but has no way of really doing anything. And Vol is actually secretly... you know... verifiably a genius. They have no idea how to get their genius over to other people to, you know, explain themselves, if you will. Much like Nintendo is sometimes, too. I wonder if that's just a thing that game developers have going? Where a lot of them are just... Pretty bad at life choices. There's more monkeys in this suit than there needs to be because, as I said, in the hardest difficulty, you do need all of the monkeys. In the other difficulty, it just makes this game that much easier. Which, I mean, is fine because otherwise you could get nasty things. By nasty things, I mean games that just go on forever. Much like this stage probably will for me because I'm exploring it. And also... Trying. Keyword here being trying to collect all the money in the stage. So the 
this stage doesn't look too hard right now, does it? I mean, sure, there have been issues with me, but for the most part, it seemed pretty straightforward, hasn't it? Well, imagine those Angelica boxes being on every single last corner of the screen. And then imagine all of the Angelica boxes taking off a quarter of your health. And then imagine that you aren't on crack. And then you'll understand why I hate this stage normally. Because this stage is... Just, uh. I'm probably going to finish off this stage and then see you guys later, because... Ugh. Just remembering Rough Tartuff makes me mad. Actually, a funny thing you'll notice, as we go along, you'll see more and more boxes deeper into the stage we get. That's because of the fact that they didn't even bother taking the second half of the stage and turning it for us. For the most part, they just left the stages as pure as they could for the other difficulties, since they knew that no sane person would go back here. Except for me. I have no idea where the monkey Oh, there's a monkey. I'll catch him. Guess why not? I'm almost looped back. Yeah, I kid you not. I've almost looped all the way back. In the other stage that uses this exact layout, punting papayas, it's more obvious as to why all of these inclines are there and things, but I'm sure glad they're there because it makes catching these m <sighs> catching these monkeys a whole lot easier. <laughs> Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, silly monkeys. <laughs> yeah, so. I really have nothing else to say about this stage. It's really that boring. I hope I still have some of you with me because it's getting pretty bad. I'm sorry for that, guys. There's nothing I can really do, though. The stage drains you sometimes. I mean, it's still fun, but don't get me wrong, it's actually really fun. There's just nothing I could say about it. Since everything that's going on is pretty obvious by the visuals alone. Also, I noticed that there's a monkey back here. Maybe I'll just steal that monkey instead. Come here, you little monkey. But yeah, this stage is ridiculous, because it's just... So, the way that they made these stages work, instead of having it be two separate maps for most of the times, there's two of the platform levels on a single area. Instead of having two separate maps, instead what they'll do is actually have one absolutely massive map but then give the ability to finish it in the first section of it. So if I can, the player go through the entire map twice. 
Let's see. I mean, it's actually a pretty good idea. It's just very long. Oh, there's that. Th you know what? Who cares about the section of the level, right? We'll go back and do an easier monkey or two, because... Luckily, this stage is so big, as I said, you could really be picky and choose which one you want based off of the color of your dog's fur, or whatever you want to mark it by. This map... Heck, there's two monkeys up here. I'll catch these last two, because... Why not? And then there's these boulders that... Well, the problem with these boulders are that their mechanics are actually really weird as to the physics of them. I have no idea what kind of weird logic they're using. Also, the, these shapes just... I don't get it. Is it supposed to be artsy? Is it supposed to be clever? I really don't know. Back here, monkey. Uh, but yeah. And also, these boulders respawn, which is a sin in gaming. Seriously, respawning things is pretty bad. Especially whenever they don't make any sense. I think there's another one up here, too. It's fine. See, this stage is still going. Do you see what I mean when I said that this is really just the, just a massive stage that I mean, realistically speaking, any other game would think it's crazy to have this big of a stage, but no, this game does. And it's sort of incredible, too. Because actually down there is where I first started out the level, too. So that's a, that's a pretty cool feature, I have to admit. Yeah, see, that's that very first ever Magic Helper Bowl. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna go back and get that monkey we just saw a second ago, because... I think that was the last monkey of the stage. Also, I do like to show off this, because it means... That, yeah. This stage is really that insane. And it's sort of cool to show off something weird and confusing and slightly scary. Because, I mean, the concept of actually designing this stage and then actively putting this much into it. And remind, or, and mind you, in Reptar Tough, you do have to go through the entire level, by the way. You have to collect every single one of these monkeys. You know those few that I left in the middle of the stage? You couldn't do that in Reptar Tough. You just wouldn't be able to. Also, for some reason, they spawned in monkeys out here, but they didn't spawn in any money or anything, or health pickups. I don't know, that's a bit weird. However, I stopped that monkey from monkeying around and uh with that I will bid you all before I was so rudely interrupted I will bid you all farewell next episode we will explore punting papayas and also let's see just how much we missed 130 dollars Oh, there's... Oh, that's not too bad. And then back here... $160. I'll be picking up that stuff on the way back. But without any further ado... Nice work. Another big battery! I will say goodbye. This is Humpty Henry, signing out.